Hey there you guys, welcome back. Let's do a garden tour for the month of, what month is it? June, <laughs> 2021. Uh, so, uh, it's been a slow one, but we're starting to get there. Uh, the tropical plants are starting to uh, finally take hold. Uh, the temperatures at night are finally above, uh, uh, the, let's say, 12 or 15 degrees Celsius at night, except for the other day. The other day it went down to 12, and uh, what is that? That was like 55 degrees Fahrenheit or something silly like that. So it always puts them into a little bit of a shock, but uh, they're on their way. They're starting to look like plants again, so uh, super happy about that. It's been a long road this season. Oh, it's been so cold, and um, uh, the last uh, couple of weeks have been super rainy. Uh, it's been... I'm not going to say flooding rains, because it hasn't been, but uh, the clay soil just saturates and uh, and it doesn't drain away, so it's it's uh, it's pretty messy, and a lot of plants don't like that. Um, they, they don't want to sit in water, uh, so it's, it's either been too dry or too wet here. Um, but uh, it's not, like I said, it's not flooding, so it's it's uh, it hasn't been bad. It could be worse. <laughs> so many other areas of the world are experiencing so much worse. So, um, yeah. I don't want to complain. Uh, things are growing, and uh, let's get to it. Let's uh, take a look at the front yard. But first, let's just admire. This is uh, the red set banana that uh, I overwintered dormant this year, and it's it's come out of here, uh, out of this uh, uh, pretty unscathed. Uh, in the beginning, when it first uh, came out of dormancy, the leaves were all crinkled and, and gnarled, and I'm like, oh, it's not going to do well. And it's uh, grown out of it, and uh, I don't know, it's probably about... Uh, four and a half or five feet tall. Oop, I almost fell over. <laughs> yeah, four and a half, five feet tall, and uh, it's looking beautiful. And we still have another two good months of uh, of growth uh, for these things. Uh, end of September probably is is when uh, I'll have to think about bringing some things in. But uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. I don't wanna I don't wanna look ahead too far. So let's uh, let's take a tour. Okay, so here is the front garden. Uh, it needs some love. It needs some attention. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. I'm going to be moving things around, but I just, I haven't gotten the right inspiration. Uh, so all I know is that it needs something. It needs something with a little bit of height right here. And I think I'm going to do either a U or a boxwood, sort of a hedge, just along the front step, just, just in front of the step. Um, just so that that is a green space. I don't want to have anything that's uh, that's too tall. I'm just as tall as the uh, the step itself where the porch uh, starts, uh, because we end up using these stepping stones to get onto the step. If somebody's here sitting here, it's hard to walk around them. So I go through the garden to sit in this chair. Um, our, our porch is a nice size porch, but it's it's just maybe a foot too short to be really comfortable for two people. Uh, so yeah, uh, so that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking something along here. If you have any suggestions, again, I'm zone 6B. Uh, I don't really want to do tropicals. I want to do something that's going to stay there all the time. And I think I want to go with something evergreen. So use or boxwoods, that's what I think I'm going to go with. But uh, let me know if you think of anything better. Ooh, maybe euonymus. I have one euonymus that's uh, growing here. Maybe I can take some cuttings of it and I can grow some euonymus there and keep it trimmed. So, uh, the uh, the dogwood is looking pretty good uh, this year. It really uh, has come into its own. It's been uh, a trial by fire with this guy. Uh, it either looks really, really good or it looks really, really bad. Uh, it's starting to, uh, I think, take its root hold after five, uh, four years and um, it's not looking like it needs a drink <laughs> and it's not getting really really scorched so I think it's finding its its legs in this uh, soil and in this uh, area uh, I know that other uh, people in in my uh, neighborhood have these uh, uh, dogwoods and they look beautiful uh, this one has just been struggling so I have a feeling it just took some time to uh, to get its roots into the clay and I know that they don't really like clay so so it, it was a real battle for it um, and trying to keep the upper soil uh, above the clay uh, moist but not soaking uh, has been has been uh, a challenge as well. Uh, so yeah, over here we've got the um, cypress vine, and it's finally starting to produce some flowers. It's a mix. Let's go over here. Here is a little white star-shaped flower. 
Uh, there's there's white, there's pink, and there's red. And look at these really fine leaves. You can barely even notice the leaf. Um, they're so they're so ferny. Oh, they're so pretty. Maybe you can see these ones better. Are you able to see that? Is it coming into focus? I hope so. So they're starting to reach the top of the fence now. And uh, as you can see, there's flowers that have, have been spent there. Uh, there's not a lot open right now, just that one white one. And then back behind here, we'll have to go through the side garden. Uh, maybe we'll, we'll check it from the actual side over on the farmer's field side. Uh, but we got a tomato here that's growing like crazy. I had to hack it back so we could get to the water barrel. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, no tomatoes are ripe yet, which is par for the course. Uh, they all seem to ripen at once, so you have too many. The, uh, the turtle head uh, is looking super nice. I, I love the, the glossy leaves. It looks like it's going to start flowering soon. Uh, the leaves are so thick and, and, uh, and green. They're so beautiful. And then back here we have um, the, uh, the fall mum. It's looking amazing. Oh, it's just so perfect. I can't wait till that one flowers. Last year it didn't flower because um, uh, the pumpkins shaded it out of the gourds. So this one here is going to get moved out of this garden. I might move it into the back. Uh, it's a geranium, uh, crane's bill, hardy geranium. And the flowers are beautiful, but I didn't anticipate the plant getting this big. Uh, the, uh, this plant for about three years looked like it was going to die. It just, it was very, um, very low, hugging the ground, and uh, it didn't do very much. It, uh, it just, it all of a sudden exploded this year, <laughs> for lack of better words. And uh, I don't know that I like it here because it's crushing against the boxwood and, uh, and also against the balloon flower, which I need to cut back. And maybe we'll get an, a secondary bloom on it because uh, these are almost done. As you can see here, they're not looking the greatest. So I'll cut off all the seed heads and hopefully it'll branch out and give us another uh, little show. We'll see. It's worth the risk. Over here, the Autumn Joy is, is really looking beautiful in its spot. That's something else that I could put along here, is I could put uh, some sedums that get to be about 16 inches tall. Uh, maybe not as big as the Autumn Joy, because I need to step over it. Uh, but uh, that might be nice as well. And the Japanese Maple is looking good, as always. And the Japanese Forest Grass is, is always beautiful. I'm going to be splitting this up and, uh, and moving some around, it, uh, around the plant. I think I'm going to move this um, this spirea out from underneath, uh, and I might actually move it just back to the side a bit. I might move it over here, but uh, we'll see. I need to uh, I need to see it in my head, but uh, nothing is making sense right now. So that will wait. When I when I feel the vibe, that's when it'll all happen. Maybe in the fall. And then over here in this front garden, the hibiscus are doing amazing. Uh, it's probably about, uh, I'm going to say maybe around five feet tall at the tallest right over here. But we're getting the buds now. So uh, it's going to be beautiful pink in no time. And this year I'm going to make sure to uh, remove the spent flowers. It's going to take me time. But last year it went to seed really, really early. And uh, usually for me, they bloom until frost or almost frost. But this year it didn't barely make it out of summertime before it stopped blooming. And that was very odd. Need to come out here and deadhead the uh, the Stokes Aster. Uh, it's so beautiful. If I want to prolong the blooms, you need to uh, to come out and deadhead. I think I think this one is a dead one. This one is for sure a dead one. I might just cut off all of these uh, that haven't uh, that that don't have flowers in them. I don't think that that's a bud. I think that that is a seed pod. So <laughs> it's a learning curve. And finally, this uh, Alocasia Borneo Giant is starting to grow. It took it a while. I thought it was going to die, but uh, it didn't. And, and here we are. We're starting to get some offsets, and uh, the main plant is starting to grow again. It's not going to get big this year, but that's all right. The cuttings that I took of the Seaboldi um, uh, uh, Sedum is start, are starting to grow. This is the revert. Uh, I have the variegated one in the back, and this is just reverted back to its steely blue. And uh, yeah, it's starting to put out little growths, so it's fantastic. I'll have a nice clump of the uh, the regular non-variegated Seaboldi. 
and over here we've got a couple of other types of sedum. I think I'm going to do a sedum video uh, just with my sedum, so I'm not going to focus on these guys too much uh, in this video, but uh, they're so cute. Oh my gosh. And then I think that's about it that's, that's happening. I've got a bunch of uh, self-seeded um, uh, portulaca that have uh, uh, grown on their own. Obviously that's what self-seeded means, Bill. <laughs> Uh, but I didn't take them out because I really like them and they seem to do better if they seed themselves <laughs> um, And then this I can't wait for this to bloom. This is the I think it was called soapwort. Do I have the tag in here? Rock soapwort um, It's doing well. This is from Botanis and then the uh, the uh, Sun sparkler uh, Lime zinger not lime zinger. I think it, it might be lime zinger. I have a tag here somewhere Oh, what does it say? It is lime zinger. <laughs> uh, it's doing beautiful. Look at that beautiful clump. Uh, with these sedums, the creeping sedums, you need to watch them um, because they can get invasive. So just be mindful of them. Uh, cut back any flower heads after they're done and uh, just uh, make sure they don't take over. Uh, they're easy to pull out, but they, they, um, they can root from a single leaf. So. They never do if you want them to, but uh, if you don't want them to, that's when they happen. So uh, yeah, and then we got the the stalk. The even I think they're evening scented stalk. I don't smell them in the evening, but uh, some of them are doing okay. Some of them are doing terribly. Uh, I tried these for an annual for the first time. I like um, the really thick rubbery leaves, and then behind there we have the uh, platinum ball, uh, platinum blonde uh, uh, lavender. It's looking nice. I really like the the slight variegation of it. It's not overwhelming, which is quite nice. It uh, it just adds that little bit of something uh, to the to the garden. That's not overwhelming. So let's check out the center bed. So here is the uh, side garden or the the between the houses garden, and uh, the uh, hydrangeas are looking beautiful. They're starting to change to their pink, and. Uh, I wish that we went with the uh, the one that wasn't a lace cap because I feel like I'm being gypped on some flowers. But with this, uh, I think you're able to appreciate each flower rather than uh, a whole cluster of big flowers. So look at those, they're so pretty. This one has been getting uh, quite damaged in the wind. We had to uh, chop off a few big branches, but uh, I guess that's what you get for living in a really windy area. And the uh, the Colocasia Jack's Giant are doing okay. They're looking pretty big and uh, they're gonna get bigger as the season goes. They've only been planted for about a month, so uh, they're still well on their way to getting big. And then the salvias are starting to put out their uh, their spikes. Uh, there's a spike back there, uh, so pretty. And then the bandwidth grass. I love that it stays short, but I wish that uh, it would flower more. You get barely any flowers on it. Uh, there's some beautiful pink salvia. As you can see, there's already a bee there. It's uh, early morning here. It's about 8 a.m. So the bee's there, uh, getting an early start to the day. There's another one, and there's bees around it as well. Salvias really, or the bees really love the salvias. And then this one here, this is the same as the one in the back, the, the first one that we saw, but this one is just loaded with blooms which is amazing. I think that some of the branches on the, the first one that we saw got broken off uh, earlier, uh, so it's just uh, recouping itself. But look at that. Look at the shape. These flowers are so beautiful. I love the uh, the black with the purple. And then we've got the, uh, the elephant ear at the end as well. Uh, super, super beautiful. And this, I don't know whether the leaf is showing up, but this leaf is probably about two feet long. It doesn't look very big in the garden, but uh, it's it's pretty massive. <laughs> uh, and I think by the end of last year, I think they were getting close to, they were three feet long anyway, but they might be getting close to four feet long. I can't remember, but they got really big. Uh, the plant itself was another uh, foot, foot and a half taller than what it is now. So anyway, okay, so here we are at the side of the house. Uh, and this is the tomato. It's coming out of the fence. It's, it's uh, like five feet tall. It's ridiculous. We've got flowers everywhere. And uh, yeah, well, I do have fruit as well all over the place down below. There's all kinds of uh, fruit developing. Anything ripe? Nothing ripe. I think this one's called Sweet Millions or something. 
And uh, yeah, so like I said before, it will uh, probably ripen all at once as they do. Over here, I need to harvest my garlic. Uh, let's go but over the fence here. Need to harvest the garlic. I should have taken the scapes off. I know that I said I was going to do it, but I didn't. Um, but now the uh, the plants are starting to die back. So uh, I'll just let it do its thing. And uh, yeah, maybe let it self-seed and then throw the seeds back in that area and just get a, a lot of uh, baby garlics for next year. And then we've got all kinds of dill. You see all the, the, the dill flowers here. Uh, I need to get in there and, and chop some of the flowers off because they're just going to get overwhelming. Uh, but uh, I do love harvesting dill for, uh, for some food. And then back here we have some uh, gladiolas. Uh, I haven't checked over there. I can't really get in here very well. Uh, but uh, the, the seeded ones or the baby ones, uh, they're starting to get bigger. And then another thing that was fun for this year is the dahlias finally are blooming. Last year, I waited all season and maybe got one or two blooms, and it was so, so discouraging that I almost threw away these, uh, these uh, uh, tubers, but I kept them, and uh, they're doing beautifully. Look at all the flower buds. There's tons. So I've been taking a few in here and there uh, into the house to put in a vase, uh, but uh, yeah, I can't wait to see what colors I have again, because I don't have all of them that I had before. Some of them did, did die or perish. Uh, over winter, and uh, yeah, look at look at all the dill. Can you see it through the fence? It's crazy. Look at this. We got to I got to get in here and weed. Look at the size of the weeds. Uh, it's crazy, but it's hard to get through here. Uh, and then here are the plumerias. Let's get in here. The plumerias are uh, sorry for the crazy camera angle. Uh, they're growing. They're kind of growing through the fence, and uh, yeah, no no inflows uh, per se yet. They seem to flower in the winter time <laughs> when I don't want them to bloom. And then over here we have uh, this is the spider lily. I ended up uh, getting rid of most of uh, the plant uh, because the spider lily just got uh, ridiculous, and and uh, I didn't have space for it all. So uh, I'm not sure whether I'm going to keep this plant, but right now it's fine at the side of the house but it's hard to walk around. <laughs> it just gets so big. I wish that it was a, um, a later bloomer because you get the show in the early, early spring and then all season long, you're left with this big, massive, they're beautiful leaves, don't get me wrong, but you're left with this big, massive greenery um, that just take up so much real estate. Uh, so that's what I don't like about it. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, let's get over to the pumpkin patch. So this has been uh, a mess. <laughs> so this is, uh, I've, got, I've got some uh, sunflowers that are growing in the back here, as you can see. And then there are, uh, for lack of better words, probably uh, hundreds of, uh, of seedlings that grew on their own, of uh, gourds or pumpkins. And then there are the ones that I planted. <laughs> so, so there's a lot of stuff in here. I, I really should have pricked things out, but I didn't know what I was pricking out. So I didn't bother. I thought, eh, let's just let nature take its course. Whatever survives, survives. And whatever doesn't, well, it probably wasn't meant to be. So um, I sh might have had a better outlook, but uh, that's all right. Um, it's not my property. I just uh, enjoy doing this just to see what happens. More of an experiment, really. So uh, if I get uh, some uh, some fruit out of it, then, then that's great. If I don't, well, it was fun to watch. So... Here we've got some um, some zucchinis starting to grow. These ones aren't looking so great. They're not uh, they're not getting big like they should. Uh, that one is is ready to harvest uh, for the yellow one. Uh, but here's a green one starting to grow. Over here we have some more yellows, as you can see. And then just here and there we've got uh, gourds and pumpkins. Let's see if we can find something. Try not to step on any vines. Uh, do do do. Oh. There's all kinds of the places a buzz with uh, with bees and stuff. I just hear the hum. It's pretty amazing. I know that there's some around here. I do see something hanging from one of the sunflowers. 
Uh, let's go around here. Okay, let's get in here. Uh, where are we going? This is an adventure. It must be just from the front that you can see it. Right here. Can you see? Right there by my hand. <laughs> I'm holding it in my hand. So there's a gourd that's growing up the sunflower. It's what they do. That's what they do best is vine. Oh, here it looks like this might be a pumpkin. I'm on a mound, so I'm, I'm trying not to fall. Here's the pumpkin. This year, the pumpkin started developing earlier. I think I was into August last year when I started to see any sort of development of fruit. Uh, so that is a good sign. We've had a lot of rain, so they're not uh, thirsty, which is good, because last year I couldn't water enough. And the vines are just traveling all through here, so hopefully we start to see more development of larger fruit. Okay, so I can't see a lot going on, but uh, as you can see, there's lots of potential for some fruit this year, because last year we didn't get any pumpkins. We got a bunch of gourds that I grew on the fence, but this, uh, because I added some manure to it and I did fertilize a little bit, it seems a little bit happier this year. Now let's go to the backyard. So as I was walking around, I noticed that there is some pink flowers of the cypress vine on the other side of the fence. Uh, so I can't see them. <laughs> so they're super cute, they're tiny, and uh, they're kind of perfect. So on our way to the back, let's stop at the begonias. Uh, this one is doing beautifully. Uh, what is it called? Griffin or something? And uh, look at it. Oh, it's so pretty. These are cuttings that I took from it. And uh, it's got such a beautiful uh, mirrored glossy leaf. It just shines so beautifully. And then down below, I've got uh, some of these other uh, begonias that are just, they're just taking off. They're just oh, amazing. I love this one, how it has like a, a pink uh, hue to it as you move the leaf around. And it also has that, that sparkle or shine with the silver. And then over here, this one is supposed to be like an escargot uh, style, but uh, it's not doing that. And it's, it's a little slower to, uh, to adjust. Maybe the, um, the air conditioner bothers it. I don't know. Uh, and then we've got the, uh, the baby gingers here. And then over on this side, we've got the hostas and another one of those begonias, the griffins. And then we've got some silver, uh, is this silver lambo? I'm not sure. Lambo or limbo? Uh, it's so pretty. I love how it, uh, it just shines. And then this one is potentially called fireworks. Uh, it's so beautiful. And then this red one. It's not my favorite, but uh, it's so pretty. And then back here we have a maculata uh, cutting that I took and it's finally starting to grow. As you can see, we've got some, some leaves back here. It's nice to put them in the garden, and then uh, I dig them up in the fall. And now we're in the backyard. So uh, there's where I started the video, over by the, uh, the end set, the red end set. And uh, we'll do a pan around. A uh, quick go, see what you can see. Uh, it's coming together. I need to add some more height in places. Uh, this one is doing amazing. I love this one. This is the... Um, uh, Twisted Baby uh, Rabinia or uh, Black Locust, uh, Contorted Black Locust. Sunflowers are doing pretty good. Uh, they're pretty tall. They're up above the fence. They're starting to produce their buds. I cut a couple of them back to see if they would branch out and uh, produce lots of smaller flowers like they, the one did last year. Uh, so we'll wait and see. I did that I think last weekend. Uh, and I pulled out a few or uh, topped off a few around the um, the tree here because they were kind of growing into the tree so you couldn't see it. As you could probably see, uh, there is, uh, it's kind of mashed up against here. So I, I kind of, I would actually like to take out uh, these, these ones here. Uh, can I see my hand? These ones this way, uh, just so that the tree is framed a little bit better. Um, but uh, I kind of like the clump of uh, sunflowers. When they start to flower, they're going to be so cheery, and I'll be like, why would I even think about removing any of them? So next year, I think, uh, if any of them start to sprout, I'm going to move them back here. I think I want them 
one here and one here, or a clump there and, and there, it kind of framing the, uh, the Japanese maple that's here. Okay, so let's finish the pan around. We've got all kinds of, uh, these are more of my highlight things, uh, succulents and, and hoyas and things. Uh, and then uh, my aeroids are over there, uh, starting to come to life, but they're still looking really, really sad. After the, the two weeks of torrential rains, I was really fearing for the worst, and I'm still waiting. I haven't really watered anything. Uh, the humidity's been really high, so I think that they'll be happy just to dry out. Um, and then this is the pergola. Uh, it looks so pretty. Uh, the baskets are doing beautifully. The, um, the dichondra, I think that's what it's called, uh, is coming down the Silver Falls. And then we've got the, um, uh, oh, what is it? Uh, Lismachia, I think it is. I think it's Lismachia, I think. Uh, looking so nice. Oh, it's so pretty. I can't wait till the yellow flowers start. Uh, I know I wasn't uh, really looking forward to the yellow flowers, but I think there will be that disconnect from the pink and purple, and then it would be yellow down below. I think it would be a really interesting uh, look. And we've got all kinds of uh, peppers and things growing in the, uh, the tower garden. This is the green stock tower garden. Uh, you've seen videos on this one in the past from me. I love this garden. Uh, I actually have another tier that I could put on, but I didn't. Maybe next year I'll use it. Uh, on the top I have the uh, the conjax, the Amorphophallus conjax, which I really need to split out. There's too many of them in that one little spot and they don't do very well. They're really crammed up against each other and, and they don't have a chance to really grow and flourish like they should. I've got this pineapple sage. I don't use it for anything, but I just love the look of the pineapple sage. I love that purpley hue to it. Uh, and uh, the veining of the leaves and the smell of it is so pretty. Oh, it's so nice. And uh, we've got peppers uh, coming in all over the place. As I say it, I can't find them. Here's some peppers here. I don't know what one this one is. Uh, I believe these are the uh, black, or sorry, the chocolate scorpion pepper. No, ghost. They're chocolate ghost peppers. Uh, so I don't know who's going to eat those, but uh, I've, I'm growing them. <laughs> and then I think there's some bell peppers. I thought I got some shepherd. These ones must be the shepherd uh, peppers. The shepherd hook. I hope I'm not getting any leaves in the way. We got some mint in here. Um, these containers that they're growing in are super deep. So they, they hold a lot of water. I do need to water this often. Almost daily I have to give it a drink. Um, but uh, it's not as bad as some of the other ones that are not nearly as deep. And you can also choose to, um, to not plant every hole. Uh, if you have bigger plants that might be more thirsty, uh, just to, uh, to maintain your, your, uh, your watering. But uh, I chose to plant in every hole, so I am going to be watering every day. Uh, as you can see, we've got some nice bell peppers in here. Uh, I don't know what color they're supposed to be, whether they're green or, or uh, yellow or orange or whatever. Uh, that's the fun thing about peppers, is you really don't know, unless uh, you remember, uh, whether this, say, is ripe, or whether I've got to wait for it to change a color. So, <laughs> ah, Bill. Bill in your non-vegetable gardening ways. So, this is another nice view here. Eventually, we're going to paint these pots so they're the same color, but the, um, the uh, canna lilies, I believe these ones are called Petora, are doing beautifully. Uh, they were late to come up, uh, but they are really uh, making up for it now. There's no blooms starting on them yet. Uh, this one is starting to get tall enough uh, to bloom, but uh, oh yeah, it's gonna start blooming. I see that the little distortion of the, the leaf uh, tells me that uh, this is gonna come out and then it's going to have a bloom on top. So it won't be long until we start seeing flowers. I believe these are orange flowers. I wish it was red or yellow, but uh, it stands out against the, uh, the variegation of the plant. Um, here we've got, uh, this is a cutting of the, of the uh, hibiscus, perennial hibiscus that I had in the front. Uh, so I was gonna give it away to a friend, but then she ended up moving away. Uh, so I still have it. Heather, I still have this. Uh, might take cuttings from it. Uh, might, might take it to the little yellow house uh, still, who knows. Um, and then down below here, uh, this is uh, Xanthosoma Lime Zinger. It is so beautiful. You've seen this one uh, in years past. And uh, I ended up storing this one uh, completely dormant this year. And uh, I really love the results. It started off so much bigger. 
uh, this year than, uh, than trying to keep it alive over winter. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to store it dormant uh, from here on. It also takes up less space. I'm not worried about it dying. And um, I get rewarded in the spring with uh, a bigger plant. And uh, look at that fun little variegation on there. I love how this one just uh, gives you random splashes of dark green. And then over here we have the um, hydrangea. The hydrangea is blooming, and uh, we've got some blues, and then this one has some more purples, uh, which is quite lovely. Uh, and then over here, uh, this is a new one that I planted this year. This is the honeysuckle. I believe it is some sort of a scarlet variety. I don't know 100%. I can't remember. But it's starting to... Can you see here? It's starting to do some flowers. I did this for the hummingbirds, so hopefully it takes over this uh, obelisk and uh, and uh, does beautifully. So we'll see. We'll see how that one grows. So let's go over here. I've got some uh, some bananas that I'm trying to sell on uh, Facebook Marketplace. Uh, we'll see how that does. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to mail them. I'm just trying to uh, to do uh, pickups for those. But uh, I've got those, and I've got the um, uh, Jack's Giant uh, Colocasias. Uh, this is the contorted larch. It's doing really, really well this year. I was going to top it off. I'm I'm so happy I didn't because I I really like the shape that it's it's uh, it's it's getting. So we'll see. Uh, I might shape it in time, but uh, sometimes it's best to wait because you don't know. Nature has its own plan. Uh, and then again, we have the uh, the banana here, the enset, and we've got the uh, summon substance uh, hosta that is really coming into its own. Uh, the flowers are beautiful. Look at how, how many there are. And they're big. And uh, I believe this is a Speedwell or a Veronica. I believe. I need to get in here and weed. Uh, but I, I just love the color of this. I need to get some more of these. The bees are really having a, a lovely time in the garden. I, I really love seeing it. Look at this one right here on this blanket flower. Can you see? Hopefully he's coming into focus. Doing his little pollination uh, dance. And then back here we have the turmeric. Uh, that I uh, stored over winter in the, I can't remember whether it was in the basement or the garage, either way I just stored uh, in a paper bag and I was worried that uh, maybe it was just too long of a dormancy, but they came through beautifully. Got the other blanket flower here, uh, looking so nice. I need to come in and deadhead the uh, the pom-poms. This uh, lily, I'll put a, fla uh, a photo of the flower if I can find it. I think it's called uh, Montego Bay. Uh, but it came out and it was it was almost uh, uh, entirely a creamy yellow orange. Uh, it was a really pretty color. It was very bright. It was vibrant, but uh, uh, it didn't last long. But Montego Bay looks like it has a a darker uh, I'm gonna say darker almost a brown streak in it. Uh, but this one didn't have that, so it might not be Montego Bay. If you know the variety name, please let me know down below. Now in this garden here, um, this uh, monkey puzzle tree, we're trying to find a nice pot for it. I, I want to get something that's uh, lightweight but uh, looks like stone, uh, but I don't want to pay an arm and a leg for it. Um, but maybe I'll find something on sale at, uh, at some point. But it's doing really, really lovely. I, I like this plant. I don't like being around the plant because it's so prickly, but it's such a cool looking plant. Uh, the window box uh, on the shed is doing pretty good. Got some Tradescanti in there as well as some uh, some uh, marigolds and some ivy. This um, uh, uh, forest pansy redbud is doing beautifully. Oh, it's it's amazing. I almost need to trim it up again uh, to be able to see under it to see the the hostas. Uh, but I'd need to get in there and uh, and divide some of the hot maybe not divide the hostas, but move them around so they get a little bit more space. I mentioned in the other video, the last video, that this um, uh, blue angel ho uh, hoya hoya hosta here, it's just gotten massive. Uh, it's probably at least at least five or six feet across. I it and it 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 uh, is competing back there with the Empress Wu. Um, I don't know whether you're able to see. Uh, but right in front of the alocasia back there, there's an Empress Wu ho uh, hosta. And then we've got the beautiful daylily. I don't know. These things are unnamed. Uh, there's a, a daylily farm uh, that hybridizes 
uh, uh, down by the QEW uh, in the Niagara region, and uh, they have uh, display gardens. Well, not display gardens, but they just plant all of their stuff out, and uh, they see what they create with, uh, with uh, cross-pollination, and you go in and you, you find a flower that you like, and they dig up the plant for you. It's pretty awesome. It's a really fun uh, excursion. Uh, it's, it's, uh, you can make an afternoon of it, uh, just walking through the daylily fields and uh, picking the ones that you like. And then this, oh, it's so beautiful. I think they're called white swan. It's a bl uh, blue, a white echinacea. There's something about it that is just so clean and crisp that you just want to... I don't know, you just want to stare at it. It's so perfect. Now we've got some alocasias. This is a lutea, alocasia lutea. I think it's macariza lutea, I'm not sure. And then uh, this one I think is called Mayan mask. And then more uh, hostas. The baskets are doing okay. This one here struggles. It's in a self-watering pot, but the, uh, the pot size is too small for the amount of plants that are in it, so it dries out really fast. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> the daylilies are again looking so beautiful. Uh, when they get a little bit bigger and there's more stems, I'm going to start taking cuttings and bringing them into the house uh, to uh, to enjoy. And here is the beautiful um, uh, Japanese maple. Uh, I can't wait for that to uh, to get bigger. Oh, it'll take a few years. This one's a much slower growing one than the one in the front. Uh, we've got all kinds of um, seedling uh, ornamental onions. Oh yeah, the ornamental onions are starting to flower. <laughs> they're so pretty. I love them. They're like fireworks. Um, but they're producing all kinds of uh, babies, so I'm going to be giving some of them away uh, to uh, friends and neighbors. And uh, yeah, I just, I just need to get to it. I need to pot them up. Um, and then the obedient plant. Look at this big dill. Oh my gosh. Uh, the obedient plant is uh, is doing okay. I love playing with these flowers. They're on hinges, so you can you can move the flowers around uh, to face whatever direction, or you can have them go in a spiral or whatever you want. Um, they're just really really fun flowers. But uh, I hate the way that it keeps flopping over. So I need to get either a um, a peony ring or something for it, or just rip it out. Uh, but I do like the white in the garden. And then over here we've got some more of these salvia like uh, like in the front. Uh, they're not blooming like I thought they would. Uh, they might be too wet, I'm not sure. Uh, and there's a, a plane going by. What is that, a Lancaster? Is it going to show up? Where is it there? Ah, oh, there it is. And uh, we got the banana. It finally started to grow. I think in the last video they were just starting to poke through, uh, so now they're they're well on their way. Uh, so the the one is above the fence now, so it won't take it long. Uh, so hopefully in the next update uh, it'll be a nice uh, nice head on the bananas. More alocasia doing nice. Uh, this uh, I think I I love um, the uh, the butterfly weed. Oh, it's so pretty. I love how the flowers come out. The flowers are, are really beautiful in themselves, but I love how when, they, when they're finished, they kind of curl around, little curly cues. Uh, I think that that's pretty too. And then when the, uh, when the uh, seed pods come out, I think that that's amazing. I like this whole, this whole experience of this plant is, is just so fun and unique uh, that uh, I think that so many more people should grow this one. Uh, I haven't seen any monarch butterflies around it. It is a milkweed. I'm not sure whether this is a milkweed that uh, that attracts them. Um, so let me know down in the comments below if you've ever had monarch um, butterflies uh, uh, lay their eggs on on the uh, the butterfly weed. And then we've got the little rose back in the back. It looks like it's got some aphids. Look at those beautiful aphids. Are they coming in right there? Oh. They're so lovely. <laughs> I need to spray it with the hose. And then we've got the um, the Petora uh, alocasia. And then we've got the lavender. It's uh, it's coming into full bloom. It's so pretty. I gave this lavender a little bit of a chop. Uh, I didn't chop it too badly. Uh, sometimes lavender doesn't recoup from a from a good prune. Uh, so you just need to be uh, mindful of where you're pruning it. Make sure that there's enough active growth below the prune. Um, to make sure that it uh, it uh, makes it through, so it's always it's always a gamble. And then the uh, wagelia, that's uh, it's so pretty. I love this green on green variegation. Ah, oh, it's so nice. And then we're back to the start. Um, yeah, 
So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this uh, garden tour. I know that I enjoy showing it to you. And if you have any questions, please let me know. And uh, yeah, until next time, you guys, happy growing.